Hi guys, Bobby here. Uh, it's time to give you all an update on this boy here. Sorry. Yep. The time has come after serving me faithfully for um, eight years. It's time for me to let go of my Audi S4. I'm just gonna. Uh, no, it's not. It's not that I, I'm about to let go. I've already let go of this car, and um, now it's just like my last video with this car. I'm gonna give you all an update, quick run through on this car. Um, the car looks normal for its entirety of eight years old, until last year's enduro, where we have a theme where we want to create, you know, cars with themes. And then I, I thought I'd just create a rally theme for my car, or a police car theme. So. Uh, I partnered with Police Eyewear, as you can see here. Police Eyewear is a great partner, and then uh, they sponsored my car. GD Tires sponsored my car, and then uh, Hella sponsored these really bright spot lamps. It proved to be very useful in the Thai Thai forest roads. And then, of, of course, I bought another set of a Hella um, uh, horns, which uh, I remounted them. They were mounted underneath, inside the wheel well, by stock but I relocate their location. Why? This car's original location for horns is, um, I don't think that's the right location. It was like behind the wheel well cover. So what happened is that water gets splashed in and then your, your horns always loses its masculinity. Yeah, it became like, like some, basically, it's, it's, it became a loud pitch. All right, so this is the S4 Avance, very rare in Malaysia. I think uh, there's less than 10 units in Malaysia. And um, S4s, you get aluminum housing on the uh, side mirrors. You also get the, uh, these chrome linings across the window. Um, and they are always in brush aluminum. So this is not a painted aluminum, it's real aluminum, but the finish is actually polished polish finish, all right? Uh, bright brush finish and uh, the S4 Avant has been a really really beautiful car very reliable engine if you ask any Audi mechanics you will know that the uh, one of the most reliable Audi engines and it was their one hit wonder because uh, it was their first time doing a supercharged engine and it came out perfect all right even though this says V6 turbo but uh, the T actually starts stands for force induction all right, so it's a supercharged instead of a turbo. All right, uh, as you can see here, there's a little cap here, but the original owner in, in UK did not specify keyless entry, so I don't get the uh, comfort access. So there's no comfort access here. You know, I lock and unlock with the key, and then I have to unlock it. Okay, so. Of course, with that whole Evo Enduro thing, I installed these as well. Proved to be very, very useful because the S4 has a rather small boot. Okay, the boot of the S4 is rather small. It's actually pretty tight. Um, it's only slightly deeper than the boot of the uh, Subaru XV and slightly taller. That's about it. It's not very, very big because this car is full spec. Apart from the keyless entry, uh, I also bought these bars that you can arrange your luggages around, which is really nice. Uh, this is one thing that, okay, it's a very high quality parcel shelf. There, are, there aren't many parcel shelves that are as high quality as this. However, because it's manual, so a lot of times I came back here and take something and then I left it that way. And then I get almost zero rear visibility after that. Okay, so power boot, and then uh, the other thing with the S4 is that rear leg room is rather tight. Okay, um, the seats are extremely comfortable, very, very comfortable. The leather, the Napa leathers are great, they hold up really well, very high quality leather. But I get, I don't get a lot of room at the back here, and uh, but the sitting position of this car is just perfect. It has the 
arguably I find this sitting position better than my BMW. All right, it's about the correlation between the height of the pedal and the height of the uh, footrest and the brakes. So this one gives me a very very comfortable sitting position, and the metal plates with the rubber uh, inlays on top it gives me really good grip. Okay, uh, one thing that I don't really like about this generation A4 is that or S4 is that this plastic panel, painted metallic plastic panel, looks really cheap and it sort of judders okay other than that i love this car okay it's a very very nice car ah, and uh, it has been extremely reliable yeah when i say extreme it is it is extremely reliable okay so these are aftermarket android stuff going on there but nonetheless uh this car has served me extremely well I love the controls, I love the, uh, the logical placement of the buttons, everything just feels really great. Okay, uh, comfortable car. I'll, I'll definitely miss this car, but it's time for me to pass this car to another person who may have dream, be dreaming of a high performance, um, big engine or six cylinder engine, German powerhouse. Powerhouse because this generation S4 outperforms the RS4. So uh, for this generation, you don't need to buy the RS4. The S4 outperforms it. Okay, and uh, it's, it's generally it's a lovely car to be in. Very comfortable, very practical. The door bins are can put large bottles and all that. It's, the touch points, everything is just fantastic about this car. Apart from the little niggle that I mentioned. And um, so uh, a lot of you knew that. Uh, a lot of you knew that I'm. I'm changing my car and then most of you suggested the same car and uh, yeah I mean I'm a wagon guy right you all know that I'm a wagon guy and uh, uh, I'm a fan of this I'm a big fan of this generation of Audi the Walter De Silva generation of Audis all right um, they're just great you know the interior design language the buttons the uh, the whole layout the, the logical placements of everything is just fantastic uh, but of course time has caught up right and uh, this car is now entering its 11th year and yeah I'm gonna say bye bye to this car it has been serving me absolutely loyal and reliable I mean I, I can do 240-250 kmh on the highways and then we go into Thailand traffic jam and immediately in the traffic jam the temperature just stays at 90 degrees Celsius. Nothing, you know. Uh, the air conditioning is super cold. Um, I, my only, my last big bill was in 2014 where I changed the clutch. So this is the seven-speed wet clutch, uh, rated to 550 newton meters of torque. So this is uh, during back then uh, Volkswagen and Audi Group's uh, most reliable dual clutch transmission. Okay. So this is not that that new seven-speed wet clutch that you guys get in your, in your Tiguan or whatever. Totally different thing, alright. This this unit is big. Require uh, you do two gear oil change, right? You don't only just change the gear oil, but also the, the basically when you change gear transmission oil for for this transmission, there are two transmission oils to change, alright. So that's a that's a that's a quick thing. Yeah. So. Uh, another thing about this car that I want to let you all know is that um, sorry my, my neighbor distracted me a bit uh, yeah that's my that's my neighbor yeah so anyway so um, after the after the 2014 clutch change the only time that I spend more money than a regular gear oil uh, regular oil change is right before last year's enduro right where I modified the car and then I uh, changed the brake pads um, refurbished the suspension and uh, basically do all the nonsense that you all see from the exterior of this car basically it's like spice up spice up our motorized sex life a bit right it's because at that juncture I thought I'm not gonna sell it anymore you know and um, well we always thought certain things are uh, permanent right and um, yeah what are the other things that I don't like about this car probably the uh, the gloss black surfaces here 
uh, they get some dust but overall this is a nice smooth gloss black surface it hasn't sort of like uh, became matte over the years so it's still rather okay other than that this the whole interior is just perfect all right and uh, of course I got it foamed as well by auto foam and um, yeah so let me show you what car I've gotten all right let's uh, get out of the car I'm gonna love you baby love you whoever that got this car I will be super lucky because this is a car that you have this full infotainment system you can watch YouTube you can play Spotify um, you can blast Wi-Fi out you have mirroring mirroring is it's under one of these buttons, I forgot which one, I mean, was double click the navigation or double click which one, I forgot, that's mirroring, but when you have this, you don't need mirroring anymore, right? And um, the car is extremely reliable, I've, I've been using it, uh, fantastic, alright? Um, yeah, let's go and check out the car that replaces this car. And it's actually right next to me. Yep. As you guys might have guessed, um, oops, let me show this to you guys. I'll do the exterior later. This car is bound to let some kids come down. Okay. Yes, I have gotten one of my dream cars. This is one of my dream car, the uh, Audi RS6, and uh, let you guys have a look inside here, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so um, when it comes to interior build, this is really uh, another level up from my S4, okay, because I didn't knew the uh, the differences can be that drastic until I came in here until I drove this. Now the C7 generation um, C7 generation A6 has got to have one of the if not most beautiful analog dials in the business. Okay, when they came out with this, I still remember when they came out with this, I was like amazed because it's a very nice combination of digitization of the cluster and the preser preserving uh, the analog dials you know, the beauty and romanticism involved with, with analog dials so you have these two analog dials sitting on a higher surface and it casts a shadow down on the LCD panel in the middle and this LCD panel in the middle will show things that are dynamic right? and then you have these LED lights they sort of reminisce Audi's signature thing right? the lighting and that was used for the temperature and then the fuel gauge and then uh, you have even the ref counter the red lines are using LED lights as well that's a very very nice touch okay and, and and of course when you start the car the car sort of come into like a like a very dramatic uh, showcase right the Bang & Olufsen tweeters will rise up from the dashboard and then of course the uh, haze up display will come out and then this uh, screen actually glides out of the dashboard. It's just such an elegant uh, combination of electromechanical parts in the car to give you some, some some form of sophistication. Just like how the new Bentleys, when you start the car, right, the dashboard will fold over and then reveal the screen. Or uh, previous Jaguars where the rotary dials actually rises up. So these are things that actually adds to the emotion when you when you when you came into your car and interact with it first time and of course this is an RS6 and the material qualities in this car is just uh, I would say this is arguably you can match this you can park this right next to a G30 go in there touch everything and feel everything and this car won't lose one bit all right you can see that the design of the dash has that uh, encapsulating design that rolls all over from here all the way across the dash and then there's that real aluminium metal part that runs all the way and then it sort of you know reflects light that, that that is a very nice touch and then these gloss finish carbon fiber is beautiful I know for me carbon fiber is is useless to put carbon fiber in the cabin 
but in a sporty car like this, if you if you put wood inside here, it's a bit weird. Uh, if it's brushed aluminium, I don't mind. I like it, but then that will reflect light. So actually, I don't know what what other materials they can put here. Maybe some some I don't know. I, I have no idea. I mean, but the funny thing is that I know they are useless, but when they are here, and then look at the gloss finish, it reflecting the the controls of this off, and it just gives you that. The checkered flag, flag feel, so uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, this one comes with a flat bottom steering wheel, um, way chunkier than mine. And in terms of the diameter, it's actually smaller. It's a smaller steering wheel than that of my S4. Okay, so this is smaller. And uh, I mean, these are usual Audi affair. I mean, these things work really well. And for RS, you have a little cutout in the door handle. S models don't get a cutout, RS model will get a cutout. And this entire thing is in finished in solid male aluminium. Okay, and of course uh, the, this handle which my, my S4 has as well, um, you don't feel the plastic molding part that meets in between. So maybe they design it in another way, maybe it's inside the, the part where it's covered by this leather wrap, but overall this is such a comfortable uh, armrest on long distance driving you can just slot your hands in here and just rest here it feels really really great and this molding here is the same as my S4 basically this one you can put large bottles and look at this Bang & Olufsen why does it make that sound no 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 what do I do do I press ok ok thank you and this one is the, the laser cut finish is so nice it's smooth to the touch Unlike that of the uh, um, Burmeisters in C or E class, okay. And this car also, sorry, this car also has uh, powered closing doors. Okay, it has power closing doors. It has blind spot warning with an on-off button over here for the blind spot warning. Uh, spec to the brim, it has everything. It has the. Uh, uh, panoramic sunroof, I love panoramic roof and then uh, it has the full Audi multimedia system, sat nav, everything is in um, the um, dynamic drive select, the, uh, yeah everything I <laughs> okay the seats, the seats are considerably larger than the seats in my S4 I already felt my S4 has really really comfortable seats but these guys are extremely large you can see that it's even wider than my shoulder both sides uh, most of the time I, I go into a car my shoulder width is larger than the seat so these seats are absolutely massive and they are so comfortable the finishing of these seats is so good uh, in fact I felt this is more cosseting, more lounge uh, cosseting than, than, than my XC90 seats uh, I haven't driven long distance in this seat yet, but judging from my S4 seats, I believe this will be just as comfortable because uh, my S4 seats and my Volvo seats, you don't get tired in long distance driving. My BMW seat, you get back pain uh, in long distance drive, alright, my 640i seats. Um, overall, you get the same really, really great uh, seating position in the car. Um, nice metal pedals for me to... Uh, I'll just shut, off, shut down the car, alright? You get um, really nice footwell, very wide and comfortable footwell to uh, rest your legs and all that. It's a, a fantastic cabin. The finishing is just really good. Alright, so that's my driving position. This, these are the rear seats. Now if I were to compare if I were to compare this car with the modern E-classes or, or G30, of course those are slightly more spacious but uh, there's very little in between them because all these cars, they have a huge center tunnel um, at least this whole thing still feels higher quality than the one in the E-class or AMG GT4 for that matter, right? It's a very high quality seat stitching, the hexagonal stitching and um, you get the blinds uh, the one thing that I really am really happy is that I always felt that Volvo's decision to put air conditioning vents on the B pillar is better than the Germans' decision of putting them here. 
so my, my S4 only has the aircon control uh, aircon vents over here it doesn't have aircon vents here but this is being a, a D segment uh, you know a A6 segment car I get aircon vents here which is something that I'm very very happy with last thing I want to show you guys is the boot space a lot more boot space than the S4 the S4's boot sort of ends over here all right this one has almost one foot deep, another feet deep, deeper in, taller, wider. Uh, so it's a very nice boot. And I really appreciate that this is now mechanized. So when I close the boot, this thing will come down together so I don't need to work on it. Look at that. That's a very, very nice touch. And uh, I picked this plate because RA6, right? Oh, okay, that's a joke. Anyway. Uh, spoiler, you get some little winglets at the back here, which is really nice. And this is gloss black, gloss black. And, um, oh, the tires, man. The tires are absolutely massive. Oh, I triggered the, uh, the foot operated. <laughs> okay, that's rather sensitive. I triggered that and then they opened the boot. Anyway, I have to talk about the tires, man, because the tires are just absolutely massive. Like, my Volvo has 20-inch rims. Right, this one has 21 inch rims and that huge disc over there, that's carbon ceramic disc brake and it's absolutely massive and I remember my BMW's tire, I was like wow the rear, the rear tire sections are 275 that's really wide this car, the front tires are 285 it's crazy, I can't, I can't imagine how expensive the tires will cost me but they look great on this car, 21 inch rims carbon ceramic disc brakes and 285 section tires all four corners is a massive thing this car is massive and I actually prefer the pre facelift headlamps you know you have that little dot there it has that organic look which I love from the uh, previous generation A4 I don't really fancy the new one with which is a straight line it looks like our, um, Volvo's Thor hammer headlamp so that one I don't that I don't fancy that much this one comes with that quattro wording option over here. So this car is full spec. Absolutely loaded to the brim. Alright, so uh, very happy to see these two cars over here. Of course, I have to say bye bye to that car moving on next week. Uh, of course, if I have enough parking lots, I will keep both of them, but I can't. Um, there's only two person in my house and we, only two of us use cars so I can't be having that many cars you know I'm not like a millionaire youtuber car collector I'm not I'm a guy who uh, spends irresponsibly on cars basically I'm someone who has a who don't have this kind of income level but I push myself I uh, I, I spend too much money on cars but I'm lucky that I have a very good wife that never nags me on this. Again? Really? Okay, that's a bit too sensitive, huh? <laughs> okay. So, so uh, yeah, man. Uh, this is like my farewell video for my beloved Audi S4. It's interesting because when I start, started my career, the S4 came out and I was downloading pictures of it and I was dreaming of it and then when I sold my company where I got my first sort of break and uh, I managed to buy the S4 that year uh, very, just a few months after that this RS6 came out and I was downloading pictures of this car going crazy over it putting it on my wallpaper dreaming of this car and now finally I'm in my dream hyper wagon you know 560 horsepower, 700 newton meters of torque. Oh. Apa lagi Bobby Mao? Right, thank you so much to uh, everybody who supported me. Um, really thank you for all the opportunities that I get. Uh, I, I, I cherish it and I work hard, I work extra hard. And um, um, I'm not someone who likes to show off or whatever because you see, I only have one watch, it's a Casio, right? And um, 
but I love cars. I love, 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 love cars. I'm willing to give up a lot of things for cars. I don't drink. I don't have karaoke session. I don't gamble. I don't like to buy clothes. I don't buy uh, uh, branded stuff. My, my wallet only costs 100 ringgit. I'm this type of person. But on cars, I'm willing to spend a huge amount of money to get cars that by right I shouldn't be able to afford. And this also pushed me to work harder. Why sell the S4 if you ask me? Uh, I'm someone who when I finish the installment of the car, I must sell it as soon as possible so that I can use that money for down payment for the next car. And then I try to find a car that is similar in my monthly repayment as per I haven't finished the, as per my previous car, right? Or slightly higher so that I keep myself, I keep having, you know, some knife poking my ass so that I can continue to work hard but it makes it makes every morning waking up looking at these cars I'm like oh thank god you know so so yeah that's me uh, that's just how I am and uh, and of course uh, when 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 Kobe Bryant passed away I'm like okay I need to you know because it's such a waste right so yeah I'm very 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 happy to be in the RS6 can't wait to do more videos about it with you guys and uh, I've actually gotten uh, Evo Club has launched the extended warranty thing to help car owners to extend their car's warranty I'll talk more about that I'll tell you why we partnered with with these guys and uh, why why this whole partnership came up and why why I'm doing it and I'll go through the process with you because it's the same with my car as well all right guys I can't wait to share more videos with you all about this RS6 and my dream wagon all right it's funny in, in Evo Club when you join club.evomalaysia.com you will be able to add in your current cars and then you can also add in your next target okay in my next target I put three cars there one of it is the Audi RS6 C7 which is this one Another one is Aston Martin Repeat, and then the other one is the Mercedes-Benz S-Class Coupe. However, recently, I kind of lost the love for S-Class Coupe already. I'm not sure why. Uh, it's just that I just find the, 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 the profile of the car suddenly looks old. All of a sudden, I don't know. I do not know why. Maybe Mercedes drastically changed their design language or something. But suddenly, I just find the car looks old. Just recently, the past two months, yeah. I still look at them when I see one. When I still see, when I still see a, when I see a S class coupe, I will still look at them. But I no longer fantasize as much, you know. Yeah. All right. So. Thanks. Do I need to show the engine bay? I can show the engine bay. Because I seldom open the engine bay, right? Okay, let's do it. Yeah. That's the uh, 4 litre V8. That's the 3 litre V6 supercharged. And, uh, should I open the engine bay as well? Let me open that. I just love the way that Audi do things, it's so easy, so simple. <laughs> I think this design is nicer because this is an actual mechanical part. This is the supercharger with a little plastic cap here and here. Whereas this one is a whole full fake engine cover. You know, not a real thing. This is this is a real deal. Alright? Yeah, uh, 333 horsepower, 440 newton meters stock. This has been tuned. Um, this produces about 430 horsepower, about 530 newton meters of torque now. This one is stock, 560 horsepower, 700 newton meters of torque. And this car is extremely comfortable, and this car feels sportier than this. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I've done more than a thousand uh, videos in the past three years, so you can come to my channel and search any cars that you want to know more about. I'm going to share a lot more about my car and my journey with the RS6. Yeah.
Last part, a real RS will have oval tailpipes. An S model we would have dual tailpipes. So if it's an S, you will have quad pipes. If it's an RS, you will have oval pipes. All right. Cheers, guys.